Welcome to the Harley Davidson Live Wire. As you can see, it has a nice big dash, like a 9 inch tablet. Very clear. Shows you how much electricity you're using and also how much regen. When it's moving, there's practically no sound at all. What you can hear here are the rollers. With no sound. That's different, isn't it? I think it's a very pretty bike, especially in the burnt orange. They do a black one as well, which was on their test day at the same time. The nice Brembo radial brakes, upside down forks. It has a nice looking LED light, quite different from the normal Harley Davidson's with a little nose cone fairing. The battery pack is very big, but it, I suppose it has to be to drive the bike. I'm not sure the total range, but it's claimed over a hundred miles per charge. And I was told that the salesmen were taking the bikes up to Tesco's and charging them up for half an hour between runs to get them up to full ba battery power, which seems quite good. It has a nice fully adjustable shock absorber, as you can see. Nice little narrow seat, which I found quite comfortable considering how big my butt is and how small the seat looks. With a dashboard, as with most modern bikes, it has loads of modes and functions. At the top you see is a little green light with a leaf on it. That's economy mode, which lets you run low battery power, low speed. You press the menu button and it just changes to sport, rain. I think the rain one would be uh, handy, especially with uh, the amount of torque this bike seems to have. Again, it shows the regen and the electric you're using. Uh, road mode seems to be the most usable one. I did try it in sports mode. Uh, it was different. Yeah, it does. I got a bit of a a pull to the talk. Very exciting. You can have a lot of fun with that, especially as it's a small, short bike. Very m maneuverable, I think. And I did like the display with the speed in the middle. That's the charge line at the bottom to show you how much range you've got left. That's, I do like the color, the gold color. And there's the orange leads to tell you that it's electric and where they plug into. All in all, a nice bike. There we go. First ride on the live wire. It's a little ride around Swansea, chauffeured, so we don't do anything silly. Uh, we'll try going off in normal mode and then we'll try sport <laughs> oh <laughs> Ignition on, all the pretty lights, no clutch, traction control on, eco mode, let's move it up to road mode, ABS, press start. Press run, press start. Onward to go. Oh, one mile an hour. She feels hmm different. Smooth delivery. Very, very quiet. Oh, these mirrors. 
my arms are so big and they don't move. That's going to be a knob. Look at that. Look at my fingers. I can take my finger off of there. Could have got a clutch in here. I would be pissed off. Seventy-five percent charge, ninety-four miles. It's quite a warm day. Uh, mass on there. Uh, oh, that's strange. They're all backwards. It's like pushing a wind-up toy, making up a da 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 Indicator. No. Traction control. Supposing to turn traction control off. I don't think I will. Not to start with anyway. I do like that. Even though it's a Harley Davidson, it's still a nice bike to ride. And away we go! Oh! Oh, the seat. The well, seat's not too bad. It's not as bad as the uh, BMW XR. Mirrors are useless. All I can see is my arms. If I squeeze them in a bit, I can see behind me. Also, I keep catching my hand on the mirror. When I try and pull the brake, that becomes annoying really quickly. As you'd expect for a electric bike. It's got quite a bit of torque, quite a bit of acceleration. Fairly comfortable ride. I like the upside down forks. She's very nimble. Doesn't seem heavy at all. Yeah, I'm enjoying it. Which is strange. It is very quiet though. It's a very quiet bike. There's no sound except the whirring of the tires. And it's down next to a sportster and it just stops. I keep feeling for the clutch, but there ain't one. It does remind me of a scooter. One brake, twist and go. Again, trying to avoid the bumps. It is quite bumpy around here. There's quite a lot of room, considering of the size of the bike. For a big fat guy like me, it's uh, I'm very nimble and flickable. Really surprised. But then again, it. Not your typical hall, is it? You know, upside down forks, nice shocks. Ooh, a very quick turn of speed. She's very nippy. The throttle response is quite good. There is a bit of a, a bit too much free play, I think. And just move back forwards. It could be um, personal choice, but. I much prefer less uh, free play. The regen is quite good. You don't have to use the brakes most of the time, which is good because I hate using the brakes because of that stupid mirror. But it just regens. So you shut it off, it slows down. Like a bike with uh, a lot of engine braking. Use our press like a Ducati V twin, the older 916, 
where you could just shut it off and it almost stops on its own. The dash is quite nice to lay out. Numbers could do with being a little bit bigger, I think, personally. But again, that's personal choice. Uh, let's see what it does on the motorway. It should be okay because it's electric. I would like to see if he does wheelies, but we're in a monitored group and they probably wouldn't like it or indicate it as. Same with the advantage of uh, not having to change gear. What are you doing? You're playing with the buttons. Stop playing with the buttons. And no gears, no clutch. It would be nice for the wife. She's got a um, carpal tunnel in her hand, so she finds changing gear difficult. And I've helped rectify that with the recluse clutch, so it's now an automatic, but she still changes gear. And say with this, it says twist and go. You can tell the shocks and the forks are new. It's so smooth over the bumps. Hardly a bump or a ripple. Even at like 64 miles an hour. That's quite nice. I can see the attraction in an electric bike. Just easy, smooth, like an automatic car, really. Um, I do own an automatic car, because I'm old and lazy. No, because it was cheap. And cheap is everything. Money is not at a premium. But, uh, well, it is at a premium, sorry. So I can't afford uh, big flash cars, I think. But this chap is, I think, playing with all the buttons and um, enjoying his ride. We keep looking down at the throttle side. As he's going through the modes. That's, that's what I should do. Can you change modes on the fly? And I have. Change the sport mode. a little bit more. Not a great deal. Seems to be a little bit more acceleration. I said it's uh, very comfortable to ride, even with the small narrow seat. I don't know what it'd be like on a long journey, but cooling around your head, um, yeah, not bad at all. It could do with being a little bit longer. I think if I had to jam the brakes on, uh, it may become uncomfortable in the tenders, as they say. But um, yeah, it's not bad, not bad at all. Just Wait for the track to clear up a bit and We'll do a rolling acceleration test. Oh, that was quite good. She is nice sound. Um, yeah, even though I'm not a Harley enthusiast. That's how we blow it. Right, we seem to have a nice big gap between us and the people behind. So, we'll let its speed drop down a little bit. Come on in and see what you can do. Let's go. Oh. Ah, oh, thanks, man.
That was nice of him just to pull out when I was doing my speed test. Is he gonna pull back in? Yay! No indicator though. Not bad, not bad. She was in the three digits. Ah, very smooth. Surprisingly, not a lot of wind buffeting either. The, the speed. I do like this color. If I was um, financially stable, I would probably get one. Just for the colour. <laughs> yes. My wife reckons I'm mad because I like orange. But orange is a happy colour and I try to be happy most of the time. That's a lovely colour. Yes. Right, so we're going that away. Oh, I can feel the region. Like an air brake. You and down to yours. It's mm. so another thing that they've uh, Harley Davidson have done to put that frame one back with a light. So it looks looks different. From the back it looks like one of those creatures from Star Wars. Oh yeah. I bet you could do wheelies on this bippy. See how it's going really well. Keep going for the brake when you're doing small maneuvers. And shut off the throttle and she just stops. You see the regen braking is awesome. The grip is good. And when you pull into somewhere where there's trees in there, you get this whizzing noise. It's like something from an old 80s uh, sci-fi movie. It's quite trick. Uh, so not that I like electric bikes, but it's something different, something new. I would have a thicker seat, because the seat is not too bad, just needs a little bit more padding, be a little bit wider. Uh, the handlebars are quite wide, but um, a lot of Harleys are. I think they're expecting bigger people, you know, not for babies. But uh, yes, it's quite comfortable. The mirrors have got to go. Um, if it was my bike, I would be ripping them off now and throwing them in the bin. I'd rather have no mirrors than that bloody thing. It's like too short, too low, too narrow, and in a bloody way. Yeah. The acceleration uphill, the torque is awesome. Oop. Again, I'm going for the brake and I don't need to because the regen just slows right down. And I'm also looking for the clutch. I'm thinking, yeah. Wouldn't it be funny if you went from this to your ordinary bike? and then forgot to pull a clutch in on the brakes and end up in a tree. That wouldn't be nice. Now that's the one I like and I like the colour on it. I drove the Pan America before and I did enjoy it. It's a really nice bike. Listen to it. It doesn't sound like a Harley Davidson. Well, neither does this one. <laughs> In fact, I think you'll find that none of these Harleys in this row sound like a Harley Davidson because you've got the new 1250 engine. Obviously, apart from the electric one, which I don't know the capacity of it in Newton meters or any degree, but just that it's very talky. It feels a lot like the early 883s. The narrow 
very thin, very flickable, only a bit taller, and with the foot pegs further back, which is nice. I don't like the uh, feet in front right in, the custom version. I think it's um, uncomfortable from there, heavy legs. So I like to have them straight up. This is more the retro. Uh, I don't know what the, the retro riding position, prone they call it, isn't it? It's the prone riding position. I am getting used to using the overrun instead of um, braking. Just push the throttle all the way forward and it starts to regen. There is actually a gauge on here which will show you the power you're using and how much regeneration you're putting into the batteries as you ride and as you shut off. I haven't put it on there because, to be honest, I'm not really interested. Uh, I am quite interested in the dash though, it's very nice. I do wish the numbers were slightly bigger. I was going to say something stupid then, like it's a shame there's no rev counter on here. <laughs> but I suppose that's not really stupid. You could have a revolutions on the motor, because it is obviously a turning electric motor. So it's got a, a rotor and um, a stator, and the rotor turns, rotates. So it would be cool to have a rotating number, 20,000 revs per minute. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, oh, that'd be cool. And would be a trick feature. Anyone who watching my videos, if you do that, just my idea. I deserve royalties for it. You just have a rev counter on your electric motorcycle. And then you could always put like numbers like they do on normal motorcycles, like one times two hundred thousand, <laughs> two times two hundred thousand. Yeah. Uh, but that would be a trick feature, especially on a digital dash like these. Just something different from the norm. I think all those trendy PlayStation people, or Xbox people, or other game consoles would love something like that on the feature yes yeah, so we're in sport mode the reason the comedy mode as well if you're uh, hooligan around and you think oh bagger I'm almost out of battery you stick it into economy mode and it will give you more mileage take away the acceleration and get you home hopefully now look how good that is, that's on regen now and it's slowing me down going down this hill and there's a lot of weight on this bike so it's going to hold back a lot and they did it really well you let the throttle go and it just goes normal you push the throttle forward and it goes to regen I'm glad we're doing this in the dry day because if it was wet or damp, I think this thing would skip around a bit. There's a lot of torque. And these are lovely twisty roads. Uh, so I'm quite impressed with the suspension, because oh, a lot of modern bikes now, electric, active suspension, it'll tell you your weight and adjust accordingly, or if you've got a fat passenger, it changes the rear shock and all that bloody shit. Uh, this seems to have normal adjustable suspension. I think it's adjustable, it's got a keyway in the top. And uh, it works really well. And of course, a nice black anodized forks, which look quite trick. <laughs> Speed bombs. I do agree with Mr. Ford. You can have any color you want, as long as it's black. Although I do like orange, and I do like this one in burnt orange. But that's not the bodywork, everything else should be black. All these chrome bits and all that. God, I was and I was a cleaning. Spend more time cleaning it and riding it. No, which reminds me, I've got to clean mine because she looks terrible. Oh. We've got all these people around us cleaning, doing your car for you for cheap, and they think, oh, no, they won't do more bikes, buggers. And they got a sense of adventure. Clean my bike for me. Can't even get the wife to clean it. That's bad. Uh, I did hoover up my car today, that I yesterday. So that's nice and clean. Ooh. 
pool will be green. <laughs> I wonder if it's got self cancelling indicators. A lot of the modern bikes do. I haven't uh, left the indicator on to see if it would do it. I've just mm, automatically turned them off like I do on my own bike. Just something you get used to all the tricks and gadgets. And my old Honda, she got no good tricks and gadgets. She just goes, goes and goes and goes until it breaks down, I think. <laughs> Speed bumps everywhere. Nice big Audi. I see a lot of people go into the bigger cars. Everybody said he's winning the lottery. Buggers. Would I have one? Yes. I think it's uh, very comfortable. Um, it reminds me of the old Buell, which was a trick bike. Very flickable, very quick through the lanes. You know, and it would be fun to have one just to zoom around. Would I buy one now? The way the economics are in the world, and I haven't got enough money to spend on 30 grand for a motorbike. No. No, I would have to. I would have to be in the top 20%, 30% of a country which earns lots of money um, to have it. I think it's not much. It's not as much a gimmick as some of the cars because you can have a good time on it. So the regen. And the acceleration is awesome. Still got to pull a brake, and I don't need to. It's the way it just flows through the bends is lovely. It's awesome. So nice, like oh, Tesla look. <laughs> Very rough. Took up a Tesla. You find a Tesla. Yeah. It is quite comfortable. It is very, very manageable. And I bet it'll be a hooligan bike. With all that talk, I bet it pulls the wheels like nobody's business. I know the batteries are quite heavy, so that might be a problem. You'd have to, it'd be one f not for the faint hearted, because if it came down with a bang, you could snap the front end off. Even though it is a chunky bottom yoke. But yes. It is nice. You see, the only biggest problem is the sound. It's got a wee. Oh, we've lost half the group because of the traffic lights. And it comes to a stop. Not quite a handbrake, but it does slow you down quite well. I've been surrounded by Harleys. Let's see, will it turn itself off? Ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Yes, it did. Self-cancelling indicators are on the Harley Livewire. Another feature. Excellent. Oh. The government are charging us a fortune in road tax and wrecking the bloody roads. Look at them. So slow. I think that's why the adventure bikes have become so popular. I think the suspension that can deal with this crap. Is that probably why everyone's driving four-wheel drives and big Volvos? Yeah, they look around. A lot of the cars nowadays are SUVs. Look at them, all big SUVs. 
because the rules are crap. You need something with good suspension. That almost pulled my arms off. Ooh, a sport ball, you got it, you go. I say, not for the faint hearted. Be careful. You give it a handful and she's gonna rip. Especially in sport mode. And then she's come to a stop. Ta -da. Yeah. From this angle, I really like the Pan American or the orange. Don't even mind the black mud guards or nothing. It's just that white nose cone. What the hell is that all about? Look at that. What a lovely scenery in Swansea. Some parts of Swansea are absolutely gorgeous. Especially on the outer edges. Then other parts of Swansea. <laughs> Same as other towns. Scruffy, messy. She got a whiz. Oh, nipping through the lanes. Listen to that. She's a goer. And you feel confident to get it down. Yeah, you bring you get your knee down on this, no problem. She's quite a low bike, so I feel upright, almost as high as the Pan American. Good as a break. Just gotta remember to push the throttle all the way forward. It's so smooth. Instant torque. Instant speed. You could easily get uh, <laughs> speed in fine with this. But it is very controllable even in sport mode. Control control is easy, just smooth. Wind it on, wind it off. Uh, bloody road. Uh, yes. Wind. I would. If somebody offered me one of these, I'd have it. Would I pay 30 grand for it? Uh, in comparison to a car, the Mustang E, was the, the only electric car I've ever driven. It was very nice. And the base model is 40,000. 10 grand more for four more seats, two more wheels, luxury, panoramic roof. Yeah, it's a bit expensive for a motorcycle. Now, if it was 25 grand, it's a more, more reasonable. I know it's research and development has cost all the money, getting it to work. But even so, it's a lot, a lot of money. I think they've done a nice job on the styling, it looks mean. It does look like one of my favorite films, Priest, they're teaching vampires. It looks like one of the bikes from Priest. And uh, those bikes are electric as well. So it is quite good. They've got a sort of turbine that they've got on these. Look on the front, 
which is probably the motor. Anyway, self cancelled again. That's good. And that was quicker, so it's probably the lean. With a lot of self cancelling, you've got to lean the bike for it to know that you've turned the corner. Give us a bit of space. See how it goes, and go. And we overtook him because we couldn't get to the ham uh, brake. The mirror was in the way. I think because of the regen, the braking is Harley Davidson. <laughs> it, uh, it's not uh, race by quality, put it that way. So it is more more custom by quality. But it makes up for that by being very nimble. Very nimble. Another drain, more drain, loads of drains, there are drains everywhere. Everywhere I go, there's a drain. And not just a drain, a sunken drain. I keep thinking I can hear an engine under me, but it's actually the bikes in front, because they're all the Sportster and the Pan American, so I can hear their engines, because this makes no noise. So, yeah. I haven't touched the back brake at all. Hmm. It's there, but... It's got a tiny little peg on it. Well, there you have it. We're back at base. The new light white Harley Davidson. Um, I would suggest if anybody's thinking of an electric vehicle to have a go if you like motorbikes definitely have a go it's something different something new I've never ridden an electric bike before um, so it's something something to try you know I see the throttle response is very smooth very instant I'm doing it now, perhaps it's got that play in the throttle because we have to move it forward for the regen. But, uh, so, so, something you've got to get used to, I suppose.